Welcome to the Path to Mindset Mastery. My name is Brad Bizjack. I'm a mindset strategist and coach, inspirational speaker, and creator of Appreciation Academy, and I help online business owners overcome the negative self-talk, keeping them stuck so they can finally experience the breakthrough and level of success they deserve. And I'm curious, do you struggle with fear when it comes to what you sell? Or do you struggle with feeling like an imposter, like other people are going to find you out? Or maybe you feel like a fraud when you're trying to sell your product. Kind of like, I don't have success, so why the hell would someone join me? And you see successful people sharing these incredible things about their life, and you're going, why would anyone listen to me? My story isn't nearly as amazing as theirs. It just feels like you don't deserve to have the confidence to share about your business, right? I've been through that too. And let me tell you a little bit of a story. When I was in network marketing, I dealt with the exact same thing. My upline sponsor was incredibly successful, built a $700,000 a year income business, retired her husband, built her dream home, amazing things. And I wanted that life, but I didn't have that life. So when I started sharing my business, I felt like I had to share the type of stuff that she was sharing if I wanted to build a six or seven figure business. So with every post I put up on my social media platforms, it just kind of felt dirty because it was forced and it didn't feel like me. I felt like I was trying to convince people to join me instead of inspire people to join me. And I felt weird showing my life off to the world and pretending that my life was absolutely amazing when in reality it was a shit show. I didn't have a big business, I wanted a big business. I didn't have a life by design, I wanted a life by design. And I'd post things like that, I'd post things like, Hashtag live a life by design or create your dreams or why aren't you part of this team and all this stuff. But on the inside, I felt like it was just a ploy to show people that what I was doing was for real. Like I felt that if I could prove my business to the world, then they would join me. So do you ever feel like you're convincing people to do this? Like you're rationalizing in any sales situation, rationalizing the cost or rationalizing why it's a good idea for them, almost like you're defending your business before you're even rejected, kind of feels like you're begging. And the biggest tip I can give you there is just stop it. When you lie about your business, when you exaggerate your business, when you try to prove that your business is for real, you're actually slowing down your business. You hear cliches all the time like fake it till you make it. No, face it until you make it. Be real and face what's actually going on because people can tell that you're full of crap. Something I learned the hard way that you need to understand is that people do not join your accomplishments. They join your vision and your feelings. They don't join your team. They join your character. They don't join because of a product. They join because of your story. And so this is all due to mindset. Everything that's slowing your business down isn't to do with your accomplishments. It doesn't have to do with your past failures. It has to do with your mindset about how you perceive your business. And you've heard that. You've heard mindset is everything. And business and success will not improve until your mindset is improved. Improving your mindset and learning how to believe that your product is, the, is a gift, that will bring you success. And I say a gift for a reason because most of the time we fear sales. But when we change that mindset to believe that our product is a gift we're giving other people, sales becomes easy. So. When you're trying to prove and convince, your focus is always on exaggeration. It's making false claims, like I said, life by design, and product or business characteristics. So you start defending your business instead of sharing love and inspiration. So do you ever feel like you're defending why this is a good idea? Like it's only four or five or six dollars a day instead of this is how it changed my life. It's almost like trying to make sure they don't object to you instead of just assuming that they're going to join you. I remember that I used to judge people that didn't do my business. I was like, why wouldn't you? I was like, you mean to tell me that you want to sit at a desk all day long and not create your dreams? And so like, I was thinking, what's wrong with you? But all that was doing is judging them. And defending your gift is not helping people, it's judging them and making them feel worse for being in that spot. And it's impossible to love and inspire someone else when you're judging them. So proving your business and defending your business is a product and business focus, but sharing your business is love and authenticity. And you've heard sales versus or sales versus uh, sharing, right? We're going to go through that in a second, but every problem in your business comes back to your mindset. You don't need more skills on sales and inviting and social media if you already have those, those skills and they're not working. So all those skills are easy to be learned and success is 95% psychology and 5% mechanics in my opinion. You just need to believe that you're able to do this because if you believe that you're enough, 
You're going to stop apologizing for attempting to inspire. You'll learn any necessary skills that you need and you won't hold back anymore. And when you no longer hold back, that's when people actually start to join you. That is your new mindset. And I'm guessing you probably feel that your story isn't enough or that your accomplishments aren't enough to attract people to this. But if we're being honest, all that means is you're afraid of being judged. That's all it means. You're afraid of rejection, afraid of being judged. You're afraid that you aren't enough. You're afraid that you being loved by the people, um, you're afraid that you're, you won't be loved by the people you're trying to help. And that's okay. We're going to break through that right now. But your vision and excitement and passion is what attracts people to you. In fact, the more successful you are in your business, the harder it is for people to relate to you. People will see the top leaders in their company have, they'll have so much success and be like, I could never accomplish that. It seems like this big mountain that they have to climb. And that's a huge leadership struggle for a lot of people because it seems impossible to reach that. Sharing their seven figure business with someone that's struggling to pay their grocery bill, there's a huge disconnect. But if you're new, you actually have an advantage because everything you share, if done authentically, is relatable. It's not, I paid off my mortgage, it's, I feel so much less stress because I helped cover a fourth of groceries this week. And so if you're a prospect, which do they need more of right now? Like, do they need that mortgage paid off right now or do they need help keeping the lights on? So when you see a leader with huge accomplishments, let that inspire you. That shows that it's possible for you too. Let their success attract people to them, but let your relatability attract people to you. $30 that you earned shared with passion and enthusiasm is so much more inspirational than pretending you're living a life by design when you're not. When you share how your business is actually helping you, instead of trying to pretend that it has helped you in a way that it hasn't, and you're sharing how it could help someone else, it's so much easier to share. It's so much easier to share because people, because people think differently about it because you're actually being real. People's bullshit meter is so high right now. You don't have to work nearly as hard if you stop thinking that you have to pretend to be someone that you're not. And on top of that, you have a special story that nobody else has. I guarantee you that your story of infertility and five pounds of weight loss will connect so much more deeply with someone going through the same thing that's a millionaire uh, in their business who doesn't have the same struggles. My point is that your story is the biggest gift you have. It's already more than enough because it's real and it's you. If you go back to where you started and you were to take a look at the biggest pain points of your life at that time and how your business or product helped you overcome that, ask yourself, does someone want to break through that too? Someone else? Yes, they absolutely do. So you already have a story that's more than enough. And when you feel like you have to be incredibly successful with your business in order to share it, that's the, that's the reason sharing versus selling confuse you. Inauthenticity equals feeling like you're selling, but being 100% real, you feel like you're sharing every day and you're probably dealing with a huge fear of rejection, right? Like, will they judge me? Or what happens if they say no? Or what happens if they say yes? I don't know how to lead or I don't want to be a scummy salesperson. It all comes down to feeling like you won't be loved if you share your business or product with someone. And let me, let me clue you in on something. You are already in sales, whether you want to be or not. Every time you try to get your kids to clean their room, you are selling them. Every time your husband or wife tries to make a move, they're trying to sell you. Every time you're agreeing on a budget for a month, that is sales. Sales is persuasion. That's all it is. It's convincing someone to do something that you want. You're already in sales whether you like it or not. So quit trying to resist being in sales because you already do it in every other part of your life. But let's talk more about that fear of rejection and all other types of fears associated with your business. And I'm going to show you right now that all those come down to your mindset, like rejection, knowing enough people, being worried about what someone might think. All of those fears come into play when you're about to invite someone to your business or to your product, right? It messes with your consistency because you don't know what's going to happen. Do you ever avoid inviting because you're afraid of what someone might think of you? But think about this. When you focus on what other people think of you, you're taking the focus completely off of helping them and you're putting it completely back onto yourself. You're not doing your job as a leader in your business if you're focusing only on yourself instead of serving others. You need to remember that people they're not thinking about you. They, they're thinking about themselves. If you were to take a look at a group photo, 
who is the very first person you look at in a group photo? It's you. And so you need to understand that's how people are wired. They're thinking about themselves. Everyone acts in their own best interest. So if you're focused when you share on social media or you invite someone, you're so worried about what they're thinking of you, but they're not thinking of you. They're seeing what you share and seeing how it could benefit their own life. They're thinking about themselves. So when you share your story and your vulnerability, they're thinking about how your story relates to them. Does that make sense? Like if you've ever felt a point where maybe you don't know enough people, Something to really keep in mind there is it still comes down to being perceived negatively by people you don't know yet. You don't know who needs you. Most people are not going to go and share their insecurities with the world on social media. You don't know about that woman standing next to you in the grocery store checkout line that has high blood pressure whose life you could save with your, your fitness and nutrition product. You don't know about that person that's walking next to you or that lives next door to you uh, in your neighborhood that has no idea how he's going to pay for his kid's college education and you have his freedom trapped in your mouth right now. You don't know if they're challenged financially. You don't know if they have high blood pressure. You don't know if you don't know what they're going through and they're not going to announce it to the world. So what I challenge you to do instead is to think about how your business and your products have impacted your own life. So everything comes from your story, right? How it's impacted your own life. And write down where you were at emotionally, not just physically or financially, but emotionally. What were the psychographics going on in your head about what you were dealing with? Fears, insecurities, loneliness, lack of confidence, no community, whatever it is. Write down where you felt you were emotionally before you started your business or product and then see where you are now. Where is your life now because you joined this business or this product opportunity? What has changed? And then sit there and ask yourself, can other people benefit from this? The answer is, a, is an absolute yes, they can. You don't need the million dollar story. You need to believe in your own. So what I challenge you to do is think about where you were before and how they've impacted your life. And do you think there are other people out there right now struggling with what you did before you started? There is an absolute yes. So think about all the beautiful ways your business, your product, your service has helped you and think about it and feel that for a second. Have you lost weight? Have you gotten off medication? Have you been able to have a child? Have you uh, like focused or have you thought about how much it's benefited you financially? Like, and just feel so grateful for everything that's happened to get you to that point. How grateful are you that you were exposed to your business or your product? How has your life changed? physically, financially, emotionally, in regards to your relationships. How have things changed? Who have you met? How much have you grown personally? And just feel so grateful for everything you went through in your business to get there. Think of what this exposure to your business has done for you. How is your life different now because of one simple decision that you made? Is it a sense of community, a sense of pride, a sense of hope, a sense of love, vitality, health, whatever it is, whatever it is for you, think about it and breathe that feeling of gratitude into yourself right now. Like feel that and just take a moment and just reflect on it. Pause me if you need to and just feel it within you. And what would life be like right now if you never found that? Imagine your health being taken away from you right now. Imagine that feeling of going back to the way things were. Imagine that feeling of disgust and laziness that you felt before you found your health or business or whatever you're in. Imagine that feeling you had still being in your life. Think about the financial gains, whether small or large, that would have been ripped away from you. No more weekly paycheck. How are you struggling? What bills can you no longer pay? Do you have to go back to work? Will you be able to retire from that job? Feel that getting ripped away from you right now and it's gone. Your business is a thing of the past. You cannot have it anymore. Picture this sense of community and camaraderie that you're around on a regular basis getting pulled away from you. No more annual meetings. No more quarterly events. Feel like what your life would be like if you didn't have your team. Do you feel alone? Are you missing purpose? What feelings or emotions are getting ripped away from you with if your business or product got taken away and think of all the personal growth and development that you've done and imagine your life right now and where it would be without the personal growth and development. You wouldn't have been exposed to a podcast like this. Imagine what your life would have looked like. Where would you be if you didn't have this? Would you feel depressed? Would you feel sad, overwhelmed, anxious, lonely, not confident? Feel what it feels like to go back to that same state of mind before you found this community and feel it for a second. Feel so alone for a second. Feel hopeless for a second. Feel like you don't have dreams and you're just spinning your wheels in life. And now, think about the people that you'd hurt. 
Think of your clients or your customers never having their changes happen in their lives. All that same pain you just, go, you just went through, imagine every person you've touched through your business or your products and how their lives would not be impacted because of you and your fear. Think of how they'd be stuck in their life. How much do you think they would be hurt because, you, because they don't have someone like you in their life anymore? And let those feelings compound. Not only are you hurting yourself, but you're hurting them as well. Feel all the overwhelm, all the anger, all the disgust, all the frustration, all the loneliness, the sadness, the misery, the exhaustion, the lack of purpose, and all the people that you'd hurt if this was ripped away from you. Is that what you actually want? Do you want that feeling ripped away? Do you want this amazing gift of a business ripped away from you? Do you want that to no longer be part of your life? So if you were to take a look at that, obviously the answer is no. So is your business an amazing gift that has changed your entire world? Is your product an amazing gift that has changed your entire life? Yes. Is every single part of your community something that the world needs so bad right now? Do you love every single bit of being part of your organization? Answer those questions and chances are you said yes. Then why the hell do you leave other people's freedom trapped in your mouth? If this is such a gift, you do not have the right not to share it with other people. If it's so amazing, you don't have the right not to be consistent. If this business, your business is so beautiful and it's impacted your life so much, and it would cause you so much pain if it was ripped away, it's time to share it with the world. When you view it that way, you no longer have to worry about knowing enough people. Your prospect list just turned from, went from 200 people to millions of people that need those feelings in their life. You'll never run out of people because you believe in what this can do for others and everyone can benefit. Your business is a gift. Don't let fear stop you from sharing it. Like, are you mad that your upline sponsor invited you to be part of this community? No, then I highly doubt people would be mad if you invited them to be part of this community. Fear of rejection is impossible when you focus on serving others. Fear of rejection is, rejection is impossible when you're focused on what this can do for other people's lives. And you can serve others by being vulnerable with them about where you're at and what you want to create. You're inspired by vulnerability. You're inspired by stories that are painful and someone overcame them and you want to be inspiring, so be vulnerable. Give to the needs of your target customer. Give all of who you are to your target audience. Give everything you can to your mission. Business will change. Fear of rejection is impossible when you're focused on the service of your mission. If you struggle with that, stop thinking about yourself and start thinking about all the beautiful things that you're gonna give to someone else. Health energy, community, growth, financial gains, so much more. If you focus on serving and giving and loving and caring, you will not feel fearful because you're excited about helping other people overcome what you did instead of being worried about how you're perceived. So give the gift of the real you, not the inflated bullshit you. Give people the gift of your real story and what you've actually overcome in the deep stuff not the fake story that you're using to try to convince them. Don't do that anymore. Give people your, your vision for what you want to create in your business. Seeing the trips and the dollars and all these things that you're gonna create, share that, share your excitement about it, but don't pretend you have it before you do. And invite them to join you along the way of that journey. Don't convince them based on your accomplishments or lack thereof. Inspire them through authenticity because sales becomes easy when you have integrity. People just want to be part of your life when you have integrity. They don't care what it costs. They just want the feelings you have. And since their bullshit meter is so high, when you're faking it, you're trying to convince them to join feelings that you don't have. And so it feels inauthentic, they don't join you. I always tell people that success is very, very simple. It's not easy, but it's very simple. And forcing everything and changing who you are just to be perceived as likable by others is very complex because you're always changing who you are and it takes up so much energy. The simple approach is just to be totally real, totally authentic about who you are and things get so much easier. So take this, use it in your business and your life. It just takes a huge massive weight off your shoulders and makes things easier for you to pursue your business and to help other people. So thank you so much for being part of this podcast today. I truly appreciate you listening. And if you found value in this training, 
Share it with one, two, three teammates, people in your life. Hell, share it with your whole team. If they can grow, your business is going to grow. So if you found it valuable, share it. Head to the podcast on iTunes. Leave a review. But either way, I will see you next week. Again, my name is Brad Bizjak, and thank you so much. Head to bradbizjak.com if you'd like more amazing training and uh, share this podcast episode with other people that need to hear it. Thank you so much. And remember to go out there today and every single day and live your life with a genuine smile on your face because you can. And this just taught you how. I'll see you next week.